there was a uh, tweet that I saw today from the uh, real commander in chief, uh, um, our beloved genius of the generation, uh, Supreme Leader Elon Musk, um, who actually had something very interesting to say. Usually his t tweets are like, people are like, oh, he's addicted to Twitter. And then you look at his tweets and like half of them are just him saying, very interesting, you know, uh, not, not particularly insightful, but this, this was insightful. I and mean, here he shows a video of a coordinated drone uh, swarm. I went to the original tweet and it's allegedly from China, which is hardly surprising. Um, but he says, meanwhile, some idiots are still pushing for fun for F 35s. Um, so basically signaling that this kind of coordinated drone assault is the future of warfare, not these, uh, overly designed useless pieces of quip of equipment like the F 35, which you know, has been in development for so long that, you know, for example, certain certain parts of it don't communicate in the same language as other parts of it, um, the technology. So you have instances all the time of F-35s falling out of the sky um, and pilots having to uh, use the emergency ejection. And on that note, of drones, we have Ukraine's yes. defense ministry says that Lithuania will finance production of Ukrainian long range drones. Um, so that's interesting because it's, I, when I, when I read that headline, I immediately went to Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google who not in Lithuania, but in Estonia, another Baltic country on the border of with Russia. Uh, Eric Schmidt has his drone company based there. So I actually played this clip before on the show. Um, and I'm going to do it again because, uh, I get what I want. Um, but, uh, he starts off this talk, which was deleted by the place that he gave at Stanford university. They, they, they published his talk on YouTube and then promptly deleted it from backlash. And, this clip, I, I I cut it a little bit, but uh, he starts off the clip by talking about how he basically has a non-legal cabal of AI technicians uh, advising secretly the Biden administration. But it quickly segues into his company uh, in Estonia to build AI-powered suicide drones so these are drones that are meant to blow up uh once they reach their target um in the style of you know japan's kamikaze pilots of the second world war mm -hmm. so i'll go play that now real war that's going on i know that uh something you've been very involved in is uh the ukraine war and in particular uh i don't know how much you can talk about white stork and and your your Goal of having a five hundred thousand five hundred dollar drones yeah. destroy five million dollar tanks. So, so, so how's that changing warfare? So I worked for the Secretary of Defense for seven years, and um, and tried to change the way we run our military. I'm I'm not a particularly big fan of the military, but it's very expensive, and I wanted to see if I could be helpful. And I think, in my view, I largely failed. They gave me a medal, so they must give medals to failure or. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, whatever. But my self-criticism was nothing has really changed. And the system in America is not going to lead to real innovation. So watching the Russians use tanks to destroy apartment buildings with little old ladies and kids just drove me crazy. So I decided to work on a company with your friend, Sebastian Thrun, and a number, as a former faculty member here, and a whole bunch of Stanford people. And the idea basically is to do two things. Use AI in complicated, powerful ways for these essentially robotic war. And the second one is to lower the cost of the robots. Now you sit there and you go, why would a good liberal like me do that? And the answer is that the whole theory of armies is tanks, artilleries, and mortar, and we can eliminate all of them. 
and we can make the penalty for invading a country, at least by land, essentially be impossible. It should eliminate the kind of land battles. Well, this, this is a really interesting question, is that does it give more of an advantage to defense versus offense? Can you, can you even so make I, that distinction? Because I've been doing this for the last year, I've learned a lot about war that I really did not want to know. And one of the things to know about war is that the offense always has the advantage because you can always overwhelm the defensive systems. And so you're better off as a strategy of national defense to have a very strong offense that you can use if you need to. And the systems that I and others are building will do that. Um, because of the way the system works, I am now a licensed arms dealer. A, so a computer scientist, businessman, <laughs> arms dealer. And, um, and I'm sorry Is to say- Is that a progression? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, do, I don't know, I do not recommend this in your career path. I'd stick with AI. Um, and because of the way the laws work, um, we're doing this privately, and then it's, this is all legal with the support of the governments. It goes straight into the Ukraine, and then they fight the war. And, and, and without going into all the details, things are pretty bad. I think if in May or June, if the Russians uh, build up as they are expected to, Ukraine will lose a whole chunk of its territory and will begin the process of losing the whole country. So the situation is quite dire. And if anyone knows Marjorie Taylor Greene, I would encourage you to delete her from your contact list because she's the one, a single individual is blocking the provision of some number of billions of dollars to save uh, an important democracy. So again, that was Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google and uh, a close ally to Barack Obama, the um, once dubbed the droner in chief. Um, but, you know, he's kind of quite smart to be investing in drones. And we can see that his company being based in Estonia, Lithuania, inking this deal with Ukraine, that the Baltics are making an effort to ramp up their defense industrial base. And you had Ukraine last year. Um, the government sponsored the Army of Drones campaign, uh, who, which received a celebrity endorsement from Mark Hamill, the uh, guy who played Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, um, basically to raise money for uh, drone production. And you had uh, one banker who was linked to uh, Kolomoisky, um, who went on national TV to uh, basically put a bounty out uh, for drone manufacturers. Basically, the it was a contest um, to attack St. Petersburg during a uh, parade. Um, and the any, anyone who could show that they had been able to fly a drone to St. Petersburg uh, would get the reward. Um, but I actually saw this clip and it's uh, today, and it's been going around uh, the past couple of days on social media of a Russian drone. Uh, this is a video is circulating on social media showing a Russian drone flying into the open doors of a French VAB armored personnel carrier. And you can see it just goes straight in and blows it up. So this is, I think, as both Kit and I have been uh, warning for some time, the uh, future of, of warfare. And just a couple days ago, Eric Schmidt gave another talk uh, saying that the U.S. Army should ditch tanks for AI drones. What do you know? He owns an AI drone company. Um, but... <laughs> Speaking at the Future Invest Investment Initiative in Saudi Arabia this week, he said, I read somewhere that the U.S. had thousands and thousands of tanks stored somewhere, adding, give them away, buy a drone instead. Uh, the former Google Supremo's argument is that recent conflicts, such as the war in Ukraine, have demonstrated how a 5,000 drone can destroy a $5 million tank. So, uh, again, we're looking at uh, transforming the Baltics into... Um, a, basically a giant drone manufacturing hub. Uh, this is a big deal. Uh, it certainly entails a lot. Um, while uh, I think that we're in agreement that the Ukraine war is uh, basically finished, uh, Russia has other unfriendly neighbors to contend with. What do you think, sir? Well, I mean, indeed. Um, um, but like, uh, they are the... Uh the ne plus ultra of chihuahuas 
really, because I mean, the, 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 the Baltics and Poland and other countries in the former Soviet sphere, um, they have been talking a very, very hawkish game for a very long time um, without the anything like the muscle or wealth to actually fight this. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.